All right, class, we are here for uh, module five, lesson 27. And in this unit or in this lesson, we are going to um, look at some picture models and look at how um, we can show equivalence using those models. Um, and we're going to do a lot of things of showing like uh, how is two thirds the same as four six. And we've done a lot of work with that already. Uh, we've looked at like the fraction stacks. We've looked at the online um, sort of fraction builder that shows us that. We've also learned how to um, use multiplication, uh, multiplying by the same numerator and denominator, or multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number um, to find equivalent fractions. And then this is just one more tool uh, that we can use uh, using these picture based models. So uh, we've also used number lines. So uh, you have all sorts of tools at your disposal. Um, and hopefully having all those tools is helping you understand what equivalent fractions are and how to use them. So here we go with uh, the problem set. And so the first two um, just say, use the pictures to model the equivalent fractions, fill in the blanks to answer the questions. So we're working with, uh, we can see we're working with thirds here. There's this hole is broken up into three parts. Notice the holes are the same size. And then this hole is broken up into six parts. So this is thirds, that's sixths. So four sixths. So I'm gonna write the fraction up here, four sixths. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four out of six are colored in. Now I'm gonna color in two thirds because I can tell that two thirds equals four six. See how they end at the same spot? I drew a line there to connect them. They end at the same spot. Those two are equivalent, they're the same size. So I can say four six is equal to two thirds and I can fill in that fraction. The hole stays the same. So we didn't change the size of our hole. We just changed the number of parts it was broken up into. Um, so what has happened to the size of the equal parts um, when they were less equal, when there were less equal parts? So that's basically saying like, we have more equal parts up here. We have four of them and down here we only have two. So the equal parts got bigger. And that's, we're familiar with that. Like we know that when uh, the denominator is smaller, that means the parts of the whole are larger. So if we're moving from six to three, we know that our parts are gonna get larger. Uh, we need fewer of them uh, to match up with the equivalent fraction four sixths. What happened to the number of equal parts when the equal parts become larger? Well, you need less of them. Okay. The other way I want to show you back up here is we had four six. This is sort of the work we've been doing in class. Uh, and we're going to say that's going to equal, I'm going to give myself some space here, but equal some number of thirds. Let's go back to the time before we knew this was two thirds. Well, I could say to myself, how do I get from three to six or six to three? I could say, ooh, we've, we've always done multiplication, but we could also say we could divide this by two. Six divided by two is three. But if we divide the bottom by two, we also have to divide the top by two four divided by two is two. And notice we end up with two thirds there as well. So that's uh, that strategy we've been working on a ton of in class. Um, and it still applies in this lesson here. We're just, what we're doing is we're basically showing this in pictures. What we're saying is we took our six parts and we like doubled the size of each of them and we ended up with three parts. All right, the next one says one half, so I'll write my fraction up here, is equal to some number of eighths. Okay, so I'm going to fill in one half here, and I'll say, where does that fall on my eights? Well, it's one, two, three, four, four eights. And again, I'm going to show that with the multiplication. Uh, one half equals some number of eights. How do I, you have to ask yourself, how do I go from two to eight? Well, you have to multiply by four. Two times four is eight. And then if I do that to the bottom, I also have to do it to the top. So one times four is four. So one half is equal to four eighths. Uh, and again, the whole stays the same. Like we haven't ch changed the size of the whole. Uh, what has happened to the size of the equal parts when there were more equal parts? Um, the parts got smaller. So when we went from having just two equal parts to eight equal parts, each of those parts shrank, it's smaller. And what happened to the number of equal parts that we need when the equal parts became smaller, we needed more of them. 
So basically that's like saying to get to the halfway point, at first we only needed one piece to get to the halfway point. But when we shrank those pieces down into eights, we needed more pieces to get to that same point. All right, this next question is kind of a fun one. It takes a little bit of thought, but it's also sort of practical because you might find yourself in a situation like this someday. Six friends want to share three chocolate bars that are the same size. So those are shown here, All right? Uh, when the bars are unwrapped, the friends notice that the first bar is cut into two equal parts. So that's cut into, uh, let's, let's change where that is. That's cut into halves. The, they notice that the second bar is cut into four equal parts. And they notice that the third bar is cut into six equal parts. Let's see. One. There we go. So I have uh, halves, fourths, and sixths. Okay. So here's the question. This bottom part, I'll underline it for you. How can the friends share six, or how can the six friends share the chocolate bars equally without breaking any of the pieces? So we cannot take this half and break it up. We can't take these fourths and break them up. But we need all six people to have the same amount. So how do we do that? Okay, well, I notice, you know, here's a thought process that our grader might go through. You might say, well, okay, there's six pieces here. What if I gave everybody a piece, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody gets one sixth. Okay, that helps. That's those are all equal. Okay, then everybody else, there's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces left over. Great, there's six friends, let's split them up. However, there's a problem with that because four people are getting pieces that are this size and two people are getting much larger pieces. So somebody's gonna be upset, those pieces are not equal. So that doesn't work, we can't split it, uh, can't split it that way. Even though there are 12, you know, there are technically 12 um, pieces here, we can't just say everybody gets two pieces uh, because that doesn't, result in having equal parts. What I do notice though, look at this, like right down the middle, all those line up, like one half is equal to two fourths is equal to three sixths. Those are equivalent fractions. So what if person one got this, person two got this, person three got all of this, person four got this, Person five got all this. Person six got all this. Well, they've each now gotten half of a bar. We've taken, and, you know, look, we could have gone back in unit one and figured this out. Like you have three bars and um, six people want to share them. Like each person's going to get, get like half, like they get half the bar. We could have figured that out early in the year, but now we're using it with fractions um, or at least using uh, equivalent fractions. So what we're learning is that one half equals two fourths equals three six. Now, persons five and six, they have more pieces, but their pieces are smaller. And when they're added together, they equal the same thing as this person up here who only got one piece because one out of two is the same as three out of six. So each person is getting the same amount of chocolate, even though the way their chocolate is broken up looks different. And that can happen because of equivalent fractions. That can happen because one half equals two fourths equals three sixths. All right, let's flip this over onto the back. All right, when the whole is the same size, why does six copies of one eighth equal uh, three copies of one fourth? So we're gonna draw a model to show this. And I'm gonna try to draw them evenly here or close to evenly. So six copies of one eighth. So I need to draw eighths here. You guys know my preference is to do fourths first and then cut each fourth in half. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm gonna color in six of them. Okay, and why does that equal three copies of one fourth? So now I've split this one into four. So this is eight, six eighths, and this is three fourths. One, two, three. Well, this is like the same thing as the chocolate example we just did. 
you know, think of this as one person up here, they're getting six out of eight pieces. They're getting, you, you know, somebody might say they're getting more pieces, but they'd say, well, my pieces are smaller. So it takes more of them to add up to the same amount that this person got, which was only three pieces, but they were large chunks, they're big pieces. So the way you'd explain that would say six eighths equals three fourths uh, because six is uh, twice as big as three. And eight is twice as big as four. What you're really saying there is this. What you're really saying there is three fourths. You multiply that by two and that by two. If you multiply the numerator and denominator each by two, you're going to get three times two is six, four times two is eight. You're going to get six eighths. All right. So they're equivalent fractions. You can say they are equivalent fractions. Equal. I'll say equal fractions. Save myself from trying to spell equivalent right now. When the whole is the same, how many six, this is the same type of problem. When the whole is the same, how many six does it take to equal one third? So again, we're gonna draw two rectangles here. I think rectangles are the best way to go when you're trying to show this equivalency. Um, they're easy to line up you know, on top of each other. They're easy to um, sort of almost use like number lines with some depth to them, some height to them. Uh, so let's see, we're gonna do third, I'm gonna do thirds on the top. So this is one third, because that's what they told me to draw there. And then how many six does it take to equal that? Well, I know that a six is just a third that's been cut in half. So I'm still trying to find that same point. See, I connected those. Well, it takes two six. Two six equals one third. Why, you might ask? Well, one times two equals two and three times two equals six. So you get two sixths, right? Uh, you double the um, number of parts, but cut each part in half. So what I mean by that is I took this third and I cut it in half, right? I, I made it into two parts down here, but then because I cut it in half, I had to have two of them, right? To equal the same thing that I had originally, which is one third. All right, the last one here says, uh, you have a magic wand that doubles the number of equal parts, but keeps the whole the same size. Use your magic wand. So basically we're doing the same thing. Use your magic wand in the space below, draw and show what happens to a rectangle that's partitioned in a fourth when you, tap it. So we have a, a shape that's partitioned into fourths, right? And we tap it, it generates another rectangle. We're going to start with our fourths and we tap it, it doubles the number of um, parts. So we go, we split that one in half, that one in half, that one in half, that one in half. When you double the number of parts, you go from four parts to eight parts. Now, the key to this is that the, the whole doesn't change. Like we have eight parts, and but they're just smaller. Like we didn't change the size of the whole thing. Like think back to that candy bar, like the candy bars are the same size. We just cut them up in different ways, right? They, we don't change the size just because we double the number of parts. Um, and we could look at this and we could say like, you know, say you, say you ate the whole thing. So this was a candy bar and you ate four fourths. Well, you'd need to then eat eight eighths to eat the same amount. You've doubled the number of pieces you need to eat, but each piece is now half as big. So um, that is how we can use uh, picture models uh, to help us understand equivalent fractions. Uh, and as you saw throughout the lesson, uh, we also have this ability to uh, multiply numerators and denominators by the same number uh, to work on that uh, equivalent fraction as well. Um, and we even saw that you can divide, like say you start with the, the one that's been cut up into more pieces, you can divide by the same number um, uh, in the numerator and denominator uh, to find an equivalent fraction. So for example, you could take 
uh, six eighths and divide the six by two and divide the eight by two, and you could get an equivalent fraction. Just the same way that you could take one half and multiply the, the numerator by four and the denominator by four and find an equivalent fraction. It works both ways. All right, guys, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, keep up the hard work. Uh, we're almost done with this unit, and I know it's been a long one. I know it's been a tricky one, uh, but you guys are doing a fantastic job, and I'm really proud of you.